Hi, welcome to today's session of the concept of dominance. So, the concept of dominance was actually framed by Gregor Mendel and in the previous videos we had learned how he framed the concept of dominance and also the latest video we have learned regarding incomplete dominance. So, there I had already told you that we will be understanding the concept of dominance and then moving forward. So, today's session is devoted to understand what the dominance is actually, actually means in genetics. So here, in order to understand what dominance is, we should first go back to the concept of gene and alleles once again. So in order to get a clear understanding of what genes and alleles are, please subscribe my channel where I have explained in detail the concepts of genes, alleles, their differences and uh, their functions as well. Today's uh, video, the concept of dominance. See here, understand, every organism has got a set of genes, many genes. And every gene controls a character. Character in genetic, we usually use the word trait. So every gene controls a character. And this gene may have different, different forms. One gene will have different forms. Many forms it can have. Okay, for example, I'm picking gene A and many forms I'm denoting it as A1, A2, A3, if you want A4, such ways. That means one gene can have many forms. One gene is responsible for one trait. Trait can be of different types. I'll make this more clear to you. For example, you take the trait, say, height. Height. A person can be tall, a person can be dwarf, a person can have also intermediate heights. Intermediate heights. Different, different gradations of heights. This is all because that person is having different, different alleles for this gene. So every person will have the gene for the trait height. But what form of gene is there in that person differs. Accordingly, his height also differs. I hope you got the concept clear. Okay. So... But in an individual, in an individual always a person will have any of the two alleles only. From among the different alleles of the gene, an individual will have only two alleles. I am taking here A2, A4. So this individual will have only two alleles. Any of the two alleles. But individual have, will have only two alleles. Why? Because the individual is deployed in nature. Deployed to two chromosomes. The individual is getting one from father, one from mother. So, as the individual is getting gene from the father and gene from the mother means alleles from the father and alleles from the mother. So, the individual will get, if the individual is deployed, the individual will have two alleles for a gene in his body. Okay. If these two alleles. Here the two alleles are different. So the individual is heterozygous. If the two alleles are same. If I am writing A1, A1. A1 gene he got from father. A1 again from the mother. Then the, allele, the, the individual is having same alleles for the gene. Which represents a trait. So I can say. The individual is homozygous for the trait. Now moving, coming back to our Mendel's experiment. There, for Mendel in the pea plant, when he took the height, it had only two alleles for the gene, capital T and small t. In Mendel's experiment, when height was taken as a trait, 
the gene had only two forms capital T and small t in some plants both capital T and capital T occurred so the plant was tall in some other plant capital T and small t occurred again the plant was tall yet in the plants small t small t occurred and the plant was dwarf for this character that mendel has had taken there were only two forms for the arrays there were not there was there were not many forms were not there so naturally there was no blending of character or there was no intermediate character they were either dominant form or they were recessive form so dominant recessive either dominant form or recessive form there was no intermediate form because there were there were no other alleles there were only two alleles and their combinations kept on framing like this now the question the concept of dominance is is why like this why when two alleles are coming one allele is only showing the character the other allele is not showing the character there this question when you answer this question the concept of dominance will be clear okay see here two alleles are there two different alleles are there but when two different alleles are there the plant is showing the character of only capital t not small t why so once you get this concept clear you will understand the concept of dominance so let us move on to that particular idea why only one allele is dominating the other okay for that let me take you some into a new example some new example new example for example i'll just take take a gene which is coding for an enzyme i hope you know what enzymes are enzymes are biological catalysts already these areas are covered in plus 1 portion enzymes they speed up the reaction inside our body biological reactions they speed it up so i am trying to take a gene which is responsible for an enzyme okay this gene is having two forms or let me take one more form three forms so in the first form i am putting here e1 gene for enzyme is there this e1 is a fully functional form this is a fully functional form of this gene this allele is a fully functional form of this gene so naturally e1 will produce the enzyme okay now next allele e2 this is another form of the gene which is not fully functional but this is partially functional only this is only partially functional or or i can say that it is not so efficient not efficient here enzyme is there it is fully functional it is highly efficient the second case e2 this is another form of the gene so another allele of the gene it is producing an e2 this is only partially functional that means it is not so efficient it is not so efficient in its work now yet another one third form of this allele of this gene i am writing it as e3 this form is not able to produce this enzyme at all so e3 it is not producing any enzyme no enzyme no enzyme at all so what we have written here is we have taken a gene for the trait enzyme this coding for enzyme and this gene is having three forms the first form is is able to produce a fully functional enzyme the second form is producing a partially functional enzyme and the third form is not able to produce any enzyme so this is defective 
this is fully functional this is partially functional or this is unaffected this is unaffected both these are affected affected means they are not functioning properly this is not producing enzyme at all so three forms okay now imagine in an organism as i told you in an organism always only what will be there only two alleles will be there for a gene okay children only two alleles will be there for a gene all the three cannot come together and these three uh, the, uh, the two alleles that which are there can come in different different combinations that all that's all suppose in the first individual the combination is e1 e1 the individual is able to produce the enzyme and the individual is fully functional we say the individual is dominant here dominant in the second case i am putting e2 e2 combination e2 e2 combination also the individual is able to produce enzyme but not fully functional isn't it but when you see the individual is producing the enzyme the individual is producing the enzyme and we say okay that individual is also dominant because it is producing the enzyme we are not knowing actually that it is only partially functional the third case if it is e3 e3 the individual is not able to produce any enzyme it is not able to it is not producing any enzyme and we say the individual is recessive now you compare this with our tall and dwarf combination okay tall and dwarf combination if both instead of here capital uh, e1 e1 if i am putting capital t capital t that means the individual is tall it is producing the hormone for height and the individual will be tall small t small t allele what is there that small t small t allele is not able to produce the enzyme for height and the individual is not enzyme for height sorry the the hormone for height and the individual is dwarf okay so that is the reason behind dominance if the allele is able to produce things the individual is having that allele then it is dominant and if the allele is not able to produce things it is recessive okay these are the different forms of the gene now this is first set of combination if i am taking to you another set of combination say e1 and e2 e1 e2 naturally enzyme will be produced and you will see a dominant character appearing what about e1 e3 e1 will produce the fully functional enzyme e3 is not able to produce the enzyme but still e1 is producing so again enzyme is there so again you will get the dominant form this is the same thing that we have seen in capital t small t combination capital t it is dominant so it will produce that hormone plant will be tall but small t is not able to produce still the plant will be tall only and you will see the dominant form there i hope this concept is clear but if the combination is e3 e3 as it is here it is not able to produce any enzyme like small t small t it is not able to produce any hormone so the plant will be dwarf so this is the concept of dominance means i'll just put it in nutshell every gene is responsible for a trait or a character and characters differ because the genes are having different forms called these different forms called alleles the combination of allele present in an individual decides the trait of that individual this is the combination of alleles that decides the trait of the individual some of the alleles will be fully functional some of them will be partially functional some of them will be not functional at all so depending upon what combination of allele an individual has the individual's trait depends on that dominant or recessive so i hope this part is very clear to you the concept of dominance once this is clear to you we will move on to the next area
that is co-dominance. That means both alleles trying to dominate together in the same effect. Then what will be the uh, coming? What will be the trait? If both the alleles are equally expressed, what will be the trait? And we'll have the alleles. I'll come with examples for that. And it will be really, really interesting to learn about why, what will happen if two alleles dominate together. Okay? So thank you for now.